you know, I mean, the, that's the texture. You know, I mean, when you guys watch the show and it's got such amazing texture, you know, you can sort of, it leads past the eye, you don't even see it. But, you know, all that work that our wardrobe department now, you know, I mean, the, the wigs, yeah, right. the wigs and all the, all the hairstyling and that for the period was just... Yeah, you know, I think it was a really rewarding show to watch on a lot of um, levels, especially with the writing you would have, um, some terrible thing occur, and it would mean one thing to the rich man and the woman who were in the foreground and something completely different to the slaves, and you knew the ramifications would be worse for the people downstairs, the gladiators, who were kind of the audience's conscience, or they were kind of us, really, weren't they? And um, so the, the audience was sort of ahead of the players all the time, you know, um, in a really interesting way. Yeah, I, I think the thing is just that, you know, with the history of Spartacus, there isn't a hell of a lot that's known about it. I mean, those guys just kind of like, you know, did their journey, but the, the geography of it was pretty, pretty certain, you know, and, and, and the, the battles, the certain battles that, say, Crixus or, or, you know, Spartacus ended up uh, dying or supposedly dying, you know, there was, the, end, the end of our show was a big mystery because nobody knew whether they were going, they were going to take the, the, the version where perhaps Spartacus wasn't dead. I mean, that was played around with for a while. Wasn't yeah, it? no, I mean, it was, I think they briefly toyed with the idea that he would just kind of, sort of just go, and I'm like, that's not really the hero's journey. He'd be like, well, this isn't working out, see it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm glad they went, uh, you know, to balls to the wall. But you know, as actors, we were just kind of receiving those scripts and, and learning the history that Stephen and I was rewriting, or writing and rewriting. And well, you know, I mean, every time, every time we got a script, it was it was epic. It was a roller coaster ride. You know, like I was kidding you. I thought my trailer was like, oh, yeah, yeah. I, I don't think as an actor you could you could you could have more dramatic scripts than what Stephen and I wrote. Because every time you picked one up, you were just shaking your head, going, Yeah, that's 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 epic. Hi. Uh, first of all, I just want to thank you for joining me today. Thank you. Um, I Super, thank you, and you can call me Lucy. <laughs> thank you for the dollar number. Is, is that maybe? Yeah. <laughs> Two oh, fingers. <laughs> Yeah. 
again, I'll return for the loss of Andy Whitfield. Um, that left a, that left a, a huge pause on the whole planet. And I mean it. I've spoken to people from all over the world about this, you know. That left a big pause, a big emotional pause. Um, when Liam stepped onto the stage as Spartacus, uh, also when, uh, you know, Cynthia stepped on as, as Navia, the world was waiting to see what would happen. Okay, so, I mean, I was just really sort of like the, the eyes of, of, of the audience in that situation. All I could do as an actor was continue my job. You know, all the, all the people who were working around us who were such incredible artists and production people was to continue their job. Stephen and I just kept on writing a story. Lucy just kept on being electric, you know. Uh, John Hammer, you know, uh, you know, I think he might have been gone at that stage, sorry. But, uh, but you know, the, the acting just kept on going. So, I didn't do anything on my own at all. I, I just did it with everybody else, and including the audience, in terms of making that transition happen through a very, very trying emotional time, you know. And at the end of the day, our show salutes Andy because we proved that even the network who was going to cancel us, the network was going to cancel us. Be quiet, kid. That might be a scanicus. You know, yeah, yeah. I, I, I think it all happened the way it was meant to happen, and, and, and the Spartacus is what it is and what it will always be. All right, let me tell you what really happened. Uh, so I arrived in New Zealand, nervous as hell, um, for my audition after like a million auditions to, in New Zealand, in costume and all that sort of thing. Sitting in a trailer, which was extremely foreign and weird to me, because uh, I hadn't really done any of that kind of, you know, quality, real, professional, getting paid for work before. Um, uh, and, and I get a knock at the trailer door, and in comes this giant man, or my mom is mine, and sits me down and has a good chat to me about you know, how, um, how the scene I was about to do with him would be played, uh, in terms of like what it meant to him, how Andy approached it on the day. That it, it was the, the scene between Andy and Manu uh, in, the, um, in the Ludus when they were so close to being friends, but you know, not in his life. Yeah, that's which is a beautiful scene. And um, we could leave brothers in another life. Yeah. But not the next one. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, like, who does that? He, he, he took time, his time, to, to you know, sit and really see what I was thinking, see what I was feeling, uh, feel that feeling, calm me down, um, and, and really sort of reach out and, and make me already feel like part of the family. Uh, you know, just, just in my attempt to, to try and, and be this possibly incredible character and, and then later on we'd see, be sort of waiting for him to set up and he wanted to get my energy up so he's like let's go for a little job you know let's let's get the blood running and stuff like that you know so when you're asking what did Manu do he's modest enough to say nothing but the truth is a, a great deal you know and, and all the time on set I mean this this guy leads from the front he's, he's got heart more than you can imagine and look I mean you guys watched the show and he's, he was there the whole time he was pretty much the only character that the entire show, and and so in many ways he's the heartbeat of the show. In so much, in so much of what Christmas does, Are you embarrassed yet? <laughs> um, but yeah. to answer your question, Donna, those young ladies are fine actresses, and uh, they yes. thought so much. It's great to have excellent people to work off, but in their own right, uh, they have great skills and they have craft and. Uh, they did their job very well. That's true. Yeah, I mean, for me, Cynthia's transformation from a broken woman um, in the, in the minds to, like, death and later on. She's she's a good, just, she became a good fighter. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it looks terrible. There were two scenes in there where I was terrified. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, did you sort of this? <laughs> she is lovely. She's great. I'd like to ask Lucy a question, and I don't think this has ever been discussed. You have to go step back there behind you. <laughs> Okay, who was the producer of our show and the producer of Xena, 
back in the day. You know, I mean, he went through a roller coaster ride just to keep our show going. You know, I mean, it's so tough to keep networks, you know, um, behind you, especially when you, when all the cards are falling over in the, in the house of cards. And uh, you know, Lucy, I mean, you know, what, what were some of the, those moments? Because you, you know, I mean, Lucy's you know married with Robin, and you know, what were some of those those moments like? I think he would say because he has lived through this before. He worked with Van Dam in the '80s, and things would come up. Um, I broke my pelvis, some, you know, in the middle of production, or right as we were about to go in. Kevin Sorbo had a massive incident. And you know the show must go on. So you retool, you don't lose any heart, you don't lose any time. They went and wrote Gods at the Arena, which was six great hours of television. And um, he actually didn't miss a beat. He doesn't miss a beat. It's um, you do what you need to do to keep everybody working and uh, try to give Andy time to heal and go through treatment. And then we just keep going after that. Um, and that was not to be. So, um, we have Alia, and that's the way life goes, isn't it? He's a great boss, though. He's a great, yeah, he's a great boss. <laughs> Questions? On the, on the subject of casting, because casting on Spartacus was one of the show's really great strengths. You could put basically any two people in the scene, and they would have good to amazing chemistry with each other. Where do you guys think screen chemistry comes from, and what are some of the big screen chem chemistry moments that really struck you on the show? Wow, that's a good question. Good question. Casting. Casting. Does it always happen? I, I don't know if it always. I don't know. That's a really good question. Where does chemistry come from? Because sometimes you have chemistry with people. Kevin um, Smith and I have made errors. Have fabulous chemistry on screen, and, and then they'd say cut, and we'd go. No swing, amazing. You know, you do this big kissing scene. Don't feel a thing for you. You know, <laughs> it's like love you, mate. But yeah, but nothing. So, <laughs> so <laughs> screen chemistry and real life chemistry totally different. Yeah. I'll give you a true little glimpse into something. I worked with Lucy in 1998, 99 on on Xena, and uh, I played Mark Antony, and, uh, and Lucy was 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 pretending to be Cleopatra to save Egypt, and, uh, <laughs> and I, was, I was a young... It's I, time again. Yeah, but, but I was a young, fairly inexperienced actor, still trying to find my, you know, calm. I mean, you, you, you know, I, when you first start acting, you're very nervous, and you, you, and you, and you, you might not do things rationally, and, and you're trying to find the poise that you need in front of the camera, and the relationships with the crew to actually survive in the industry. But I wasn't, I was, I was kind of like, I think I was a bit rude to Lucy back in, back in Zena and she put me in my place and kind of like, you know, I kind of had to wait several years, really? several years later. Yeah, yeah, you know, I, I remember coming back and, and Rob recasting me, you know, Rob Tapper, who, who, you know, did that, recast me in 30 Days of Night with Josh Hartnett, which was my second big break. I mean, this guy is responsible for me being here. I mean, honestly, Rob Tapper was the guy who, gave me my acting career, yeah, really. and, um, and you know, uh, but then when I came on to, to you know, to Spartacus, and, and I had to come up with, with, with Lucy again and, and, and play these incredible scenes, you know, it was like this growth period that I'd sort of been involved with, with her husband giving me opportunities, but then it was like coming back and trying to be more professional and try to hit my marks with Lucy, and I remember just feeling like it was the proving point I had to get into a scene with Lucy and Frickham, which was perfect, because that was exactly Crixus's kind of thing, you know? <laughs> and so going into a scene with Lucy, because she just is so alive in her eyes, you know, you ask about chemistry, I mean, you go into a scene with Lucy and you're playing the game at the, at the, at the level, you know what I mean? But, but thank you, Lucy, thanks for the lessons, the lessons in acting, I really appreciate it. Thank you. I've forgotten what any of that. And the lessons in love. <laughs> Excellent question. And when we work it out, we'll start a production company and make successful films for the rest of our lives. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. I Welcome wanted back. to ask you all, what are some of your most memorable Spartacus moments? Ooh. Season one, season two, season three. Season two. <laughs> Um, seeing him for the first time in the trailer before he was, before he was, um, 
you know, because it was a, such a big thing in, in, our, in our series, bringing on a new Spartacus, you know, and seeing this guy, he was, he was <laughs> young, nervous, <laughs> his eyes were full of all that emotional stuff that you know was going to be you know, good in front of the camera once it gets tuned in and all that sort of stuff, but just meeting him and, and, and sort of feeling, you know, this is, this is potentially at that stage the guy who's going to end up being the I love the father. I'm sorry. No, I was just saying. I love the father. I am the eponymous role. Um, I love anything to do with the father in law, where he walks in on the menage a trois. <laughs>